What's up, family? I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. I'm good. What do you want to talk about today? I was thinking we can talk about how to get started on keto. We have a lot of people who ask us all the time, like, how do I get started? Because we've had some success you know, living on keto diet. So <laughs> we're always recommending people. So I figure we put out a video on how we recommend. I mean, this is definitely not the only way. No. But, you know, it's how we recommend it after the trials and tribulations that we went through when we first started. Because we've done it right and we've done it wrong. Absolutely. So we don't want people to have to do it wrong. And I would definitely start by saying we're not doctors. We are not. Yeah. So this is just like after doing our research and trying different things, what we find that works when we recommend, you know, people how to get started. And we'd like to minimize people's frustration. Yeah. The discomfort you go through in the first couple weeks. Because a lot of people quit because it gets too hard, but I think it's too hard because they're putting a lot of added pressure on themselves. Right. Right. That are, that's not necessary. Yeah. Or they have days where they're like, Oh, I messed up. And so now the whole day is shot and right. keto's not like that. Right. Yeah. Well, and first of all, if you, if you do mess up when you're on keto, don't have the attitude of, well, I screwed up today. So today's just a cheat day. No. If you mess up at lunch, Go right back to it at dinner time. Right. Because what's going to happen is if let's say you eat too many carbs at lunchtime, you know, oh, well, so your body will burn off those carbs and they'll go right back into the fat. But if you decide, well, I've messed up the whole day, you're just giving yourself more carbohydrates to get rid of. That's right. And you're really, we're trying to change the way our body's fueled. Right. And that's the whole idea. So basically let's start with what is keto? Exactly. So keto is eating high fat, moderate protein. Low carbohydrate and low carbohydrate meaning less than 5% of our calories come from carbs and mostly cruciferous vegetables, right? So, and the easiest way to get yourself in as quick as possible is keeping your net carbohydrates under 20. The easiest way to do that is to, as soon as humanly possible, get rid of bread, rice, starches, potatoes, pasta, all of those things, all the good stuff. <laughs> Well, all the things that used to be the good stuff, because right. your palate is going to change. Yeah, absolutely. But you get, here's the thing is people say, well, you mean I can't eat bread anymore? I can't eat spaghetti anymore. I can't eat rice. I can't eat sugar. And I'm like, that's true. But you can eat bacon, cheese, steak, all the things that nobody else can eat. In fact, you know, our son Anthony was, we were driving in the car today and he was going, Hey, did you see this study? How like you should never use coconut oil because it's loaded with saturated fat. And I'm like, but saturated fat is actually good for you, especially on the keto lifestyle. And let's look at where it's coming from. That's and it's right. coming from people who are saying eat high carbohydrate, low fat. Well, then in that case, yeah, don't touch coconut oil. And there's a lot of confusion about what keto is. And a lot of people think it's just 50, 50 fat and protein. And again, that's not no, what it is. At no, all. that's closer to Atkins. Exactly. So, so step number one mm -hmm. would be to know what keto is. Right. That's step number one, right? Yeah. Step number two, I would say to go and do your research. Mm -hmm. I know that when I got started, I really researched a lot of things, but the one problem that I found was there are so many people out there doing things a little bit differently. Yeah. And when I started, I tried to really stick by the rules of keto, hitting the correct macros from day one. And that's why I kind of figured we could do this because we kind of advise people a little bit different when they get started. Yeah. Because I think it's hard enough to just dump those carbohydrates. And just to switch your body from burning off of carbohydrates, running off of carbohydrates and changing it to run off of fat. Right. That's a huge change. Right. So if we can just do that at first, it'll make doing actual keto the proper way much easier. Yeah. But I would say to do your research, see what our goals are. So go out and look at some different YouTubers, um, read some different books, but there's like uh, Matt and Mega from Keto Connect. There's yes. Dr. Ken Berry. There's Dr. Eric Berg. There's uh, Thomas DeLawler. That's just a few. And those are some of the people that we watch. Now they will have some differences of opinions on, on certain things. And you just sort of 
take a little bit from each right. person and, um, you know, talk it over with your body. Like you, you know, your journey and my journey have been different. Very different. Yeah. yeah. But and then what she means by that is like, you know, for example, Dr. Bird recommends seven to 10 cups of vegetables per day, mm-hmm. which is a great idea. We yes. definitely need it. You're going to get a lot of your potassium from your vegetables mm-hmm. and a lot of your vitamins and your minerals. But he says, you don't have to count that as part of your carbs. Whereas a lot of other people say, yes, you do. So, and we do, we do. And what I like to do is say, listen to the different ones, take the pluses, take the minuses and figure out what works best for your body. And the longer you're doing this, you will the more, feel it. Yeah. The more in tune you'll be with your body. Yeah. It feels good. You'll have like a little bit more clarity, a little bit more energy as you tweak it. Right. So step number two, I would say is to go in, take a look at what your macros should be. Yes. We're not going to goal. Right. We're not going to focus on them the first couple of weeks. Like you said, it's not our goal, mm-hmm. but at least figure out where do you want to end up? So I'll link a macro calculator down below in the description And basically, all you have to do is you put in, like, your height, your weight, uh, about what your body fat percentage is. There's different things out there where you can, like, see pictures of how to guess it if you don't know your exact body fat percentage. Yeah. And it'll give you a thing of, like, you're supposed to eat this many grams of fat and this many grams of protein and this many grams of carbs. Super helpful. Yeah. And it's a course syllabus, right? You don't do the entire course at once. Right. Taking it one step at a time. But that is the plan. That's what you're... trying to achieve is exactly those macros. Right. And and that was the mistake I made. I tried to hit every one of those macros on day one and I struggled because I was never used to eating like a lot of fat. And so I'm going, well, I would at the end of the day be like, oh my gosh, I've got to eat like 60 more grams of fat, but I am at the top of my max calories already. What do I right. do now? Because I didn't know how to manage that. So step number three would be keep it simple, stupid. The KISS method. The KISS method. Yeah. Yes. Or easy keto is what some people call it. Or lazy keto. Or lazy keto. I, I, I like easy keto. I like easy keto. So, yeah. so but what we were talking about there is all we're going to worry about is our net carbs. Yes. Now, we definitely want to go out and, like we said, take a look at a carb manager mm-hmm. and figure out what every, our ratios are. But for the first two weeks, all we're going to do is keep it simple. And along with that, keep your net carbs under 20. Yes. Now, we should probably talk about how do you calculate net carbs. Absolutely. So, on any uh, nutritional label, you're going to have something that says total carbs. And that's going to be a number in grams. That's here in the U.S. Yes. Um, Under, if you just go down a couple lines, it'll usually tell you what the fiber is. Mm -hmm. Um, And, of course, this is on prepackaged stuff. Right. Other things you have to kind of look up the nutritional label at home. But, um, so you're going to subtract the fiber from the total carbs. If there are any sugar alcohols, you're going to subtract those as well to give you your net carbs per serving. And I can't stress enough to make sure you're checking your serving size to see exactly how much you're getting. The one thing I would say is when it comes to your 20 net carbs, you want to get them from your food and instead of your snacking. So there are keto approved foods that you can eat on keto that are low in carbohydrates like berries and nuts and things like that. You really want to stay away from them for the first two weeks because number one, you can really slip up with them. Yes. You You know, we personally don't eat fruit. We don't even eat berries once in a blue moon where we have a few blackberries. But when you look at a serving size of blackberries, it's like, what am I really getting at it? At least when you get into the nuts, you're getting a lot of healthy fat with it. Yeah. But blackberries, I'm getting some flavor. The fruits and nuts can really sort of become a crutch. Mm-hmm. You don't want to have a plan that you're going to have training wheels for the rest of your life. And there are lots of recipes you're going to see out there for things like fat bombs and cookies and stuff like that. I strongly recommend yeah. in your first two weeks to stay away from that stuff. You don't need it yet. You, you know... It's, it's, there's definitely a place for it, mm-hmm. but it's super easy to consume like 10 fat bombs in a day easily because they're super sweet. It's like eating a piece of candy. Mm-hmm. And what you really want to do in these first two weeks is change the way your body thinks. Yes. And what's going to happen is if you start consuming all that sweet stuff, you're going to, it's going to take you that much longer to get away from the cravings and it's going to make it that much easier to slip back to eating sugar. So for the first two weeks, just snap on lots of whole foods. Yeah. 
You know? Just get really full at each meal. So the next thing I would say is don't worry about your calories. No, not to begin with. Not for the first two weeks. It's hard enough to get to get rid of all the carbohydrates. You're going to feel hungry at first. You're going to be like, this is kind of weird. Most of us are used to eating all day long, Crazy. snacking. Our body, you know, if, you, if you're used to snacking at your desk at work, you're, that's not going to go away immediately when you start eating on a keto lifestyle. So just keep with that, and we're just going to change the foods we eat. Right. Don't worry about your calories for the first two weeks. Let's get fat adapted. And we can do that by just getting our body to switch over to fat by keeping the carbs under 20. If you find that you're hungry, Mm -hmm. eat more fat. Right. We don't want you getting hangry. Right. Yeah. Definitely don't get hangry. Because then you'll quit. Right. You know, if you find like, you know, you know what? In the morning, you're ravenously hungry. Eat a big breakfast. Eat a big breakfast. And the night, the net, and that dinner time, add more fat because you'll find that the fat fills you up even more. Yes. I think... The next thing that I would concentrate on is snacking properly or not snacking at all. Right. For you, you had to snack properly. I learned that snacking just wasn't a good thing for me. Right. And now you definitely want to try to get to, especially if you're trying to lose weight, Mm -hmm. you know, our goal is to really try to eliminate some snacking, if not all of it, and possibly even drop to two or one meal a day. But not everybody needs to do that. And that's like for another video, right? Now we're talking about keeping it simple. But if you are a snacker, I would not try to eliminate snacking right from the get-go. Instead, shift your snacks. Keep it a whole product, like a boiled egg. Right. You definitely want to um, try to not let your snacks be keto-approved snacks. Because you could get into serious trouble like you did the first time. Yes. Right? You can, next thing you know, you're eating way too many nuts, you know, way too many berries, things Quest like that. Quest bars. Quest bars. So I would say if you find that you have to snack, make it whole foods. Yeah. Hard boiled eggs, maybe a little bit of cheese, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Be and understands that there are carbs in those things. Right. So, you know, even like eggs has a carb in it, you know, it in counts. an egg. So I would say the next thing is to keep your foods as whole as possible. Stay away from prepackaged processed foods. I mean, if you absolutely have to, if you're like on the go and it's emergency, you know, get a Jimmy John's Unwitch or something like that. But try to really keep to whole foods, like eating steak and eggs and things like that. So when you go to the grocery store, stay on the outside of the store and don't go into the aisles. Yes, the the outside area where you need a sweater. If you have to take your sweater off, the That's heat true. is on. Yeah. You don't want to do that. And although it's going to be strange because you're like, wow, I'm not utilizing the entire grocery store anymore. It's okay. And you're ultimately going to feel way better about yourself because you're eating real food. You're not eating a bunch of chemicals and things to keep stuff on the shelf for for months and months and years. <laughs> yeah, now because you're trying to eat as many whole foods as possible, you're going to have to look up like on like a USDA website or on my fitness pal what is in it because yes. most of what you're eating shouldn't have a nutritional label. Right. And to minimize needing other foods, I would say the next step you need to do is kind of give yourself more time to plan and prep because yeah. it you want to get out of the habit of just grabbing a prepackaged item and, and leaving the house. So you, you may need to meal prep at the beginning of the week. And we did do a video on that. It's super easy. It's actually better as far as cost wise goes. You can do it very budget conscious, Yeah, but um, that is a good step to, to have some meal prepping going on. So you have grab and go items in your fridge, but uh, things that aren't, prepackaged and have a lot of chemicals to them. Yeah, I would definitely say meal prep. I mean, we're trying to meal prep even more now and we've been doing it for a long time because when you meal prep, you'll find that you don't have the urge or the need to run to the store, to run out to eat. I mean, once in a while, it's nice to go out to eat, but in the very beginning, you really want to just be able to go, you're going to be hungry. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to eat. You're so used to grabbing whatever. and. 
the bottom line is when it comes to keto, when it comes to eating a low carbohydrate or almost no carbohydrate diet, there's not a lot of things that you can just run to the store and buy without making it. Right. You know, so what you, the best thing to do would be pre-make some hard boiled eggs. Like I like to keep a bag of hard boiled eggs in a refrigerator at all times. So if I really need to eat something, if I'm on my way out the door, if I woke up late, I can grab a hard boiled egg. Cube up the cheese, make some bacon and have it cooked ahead of time. Yeah. This also helps to break your normal eating habits that you've had. Maybe you're used to cooking three meals a day, being in the kitchen a million times. If you're trying to avoid some of those habits too, the behaviors that were connected to the poor eating, right? This is a great way to just jumpstart that. Yeah. You're changing it all up. Your entire schedule is different. Yeah. So that, and it's really important to do our meal prep that will really help. So I would definitely be prepared to have a little bit of discomfort at the beginning, but keep in mind, you're changing lifestyle. If you start working out and exercising, you're going to have some muscle soreness. That's to be expected. When you are detoxing off of all of the sugar and all of the processed foods that we've been putting in our body for years and years, your body's going to be like, no, I think I need that still. Yeah. And the best way to get yourself through what people call the keto flu mm -hmm. is to up your electrolytes. Yes. And you'll find as you get into keto more, as you start living the ketogenic lifestyle, you don't need to worry about it as much because you're going to get a lot of those things from the foods you eat. But the biggest thing you want to worry about when you first start is potassium, magnesium, and your sodium. Yes. So you can get that from uh, eating pink salt, mm -hmm. um, from eating things like avocados, yes. and get yourself a good electrolyte powder. Um, you know, we use Ultima. Yes. We do. You can even buy Zip Fizzes, but I would not really worry about that unless you're doing like workout where you're sweating a lot because yes. the Zip Fizzes are going to account for two carbs. Yes. So if you're trying to keep under 20... And, you know, most people, when they first start, they're like, where can I like do, you know, sneak in extra carbs for things like that? You're not going to want to waste it on a zip fizz. No, you're not. And since we're in kind of like the liquid and beverages and stuff, you want to stay away from alcohol. Yeah. I mean, at some point later down the line, you know, it's, there are some alcoholic beverages that you can consume without affecting keto. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you can drink mostly hard liquor. There's some wines, but you're pretty much going to end up having a it seems like hard weird liquor. advice. Yeah, but, but definitely in the beginning, you want to stay away from it because the bottom line is if you start consuming alcohol, your body is going to process that alcohol before it processes the fat. So you definitely want to stay away from that. Also, if you do decide to consume alcohol, understand that because you don't have any of the carbohydrates, and you're already going to be in an almost dehydrated state. Your body's not storing yes. as much water. You will get drunk much quicker and thus dehydrate more. And if you don't hydrate well and if you drink too much. I'm talking about the worst hangover you're ever. You're going to have like the worst hangover. So I would definitely stay away from alcohol, especially in the beginning. But if you're going to do it, you're going to need at least half, if not a quarter of what it used to take to get you drunk. So you have to be super careful with it. So yes. You definitely definitely want to stay with from alcohol. Yeah. Stay home. Yeah. Stay home and drink something if you have to drink something. Yeah. Don't drink and drive. No, never. So we talked about electrolytes. We talked about keep, we talked about snacking. We talked about what we should eat, mm -hmm. right? Try to stay with whole foods. Uh, we talked about not worrying about calories yes. at the beginning. We're, we're going to worry about that in the next video. Yes. When we talk about like once we are become more fat adapted and used to it. Is there anything else? I would say just be kind to yourself. This isn't a judgment thing. This we I went. This is my second time on this diet. It took a, a second time for for me to to let it take and and really have success on this diet. And it's a constant learning process. So don't be so hard on yourself. You're, you're making a really good decision for your life yeah. to get healthy. And again, the weight loss benefits are fantastic, but the health benefits are even better. Yeah. That's, that's great advice. And be prepared. People are going to look at you weird. We've talked about it in our other videos. People are going to look at you weird. They're going to make comments. That's okay because Joe and I, we really like you. Yeah. Yeah. We're your buddies. We're your friends. And, and there's an entire community yes. of keto people out there on Reddit, on YouTube that are like, if you get onto the keto Reddit, 
I mean, so many people who are supportive. Yeah. And just know there's an entire community out there to help support you. We got a thumbs up. Give a thumbs up for them. I have a thumbs up. Thumbs, thumbs up. up. You're awesome. Well, that's a good plan. And I think that's a great place for us to stop in this first video. We'll do a second video of what to do in like after two weeks. Yeah. So we can just get ourselves started in the first two weeks. That'll help get you fat adapted. That'll help get your body used to not eating the carbohydrates. And then we can get more into hitting your macros, the best places to get your different facts from, what the best meats are. Like I said, like not eating chicken breast and eating more fattier cuts of meats. We can get more into that and worry more about that later on. But for the next two weeks, all you need to do is worry about keep your carbs low, keep your fats high. Don't worry about ratios of it. So long as you keep your carbs under 20, you'll definitely get yourself into ketosis and get yourself on your way to a good keto lifestyle. And you're going to enjoy some really delicious food. And in the meantime, if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to our channel or consider subscribing to our channel and hit the like button. Yeah. And don't forget if you hit the little bell icon, you'll be notified every time we upload a video. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.